All right, to give you an example of the mold that I'm going to be making in this video demonstration, I want to show you this uh, split mold that I made in the past. It's for a paddle board uh, paddle handle. Uh, it'll be just like this. It's got a gel coat surface uh, for the molding surface and it's built up with uh, chopster and fiberglass and polyester resin. Um, you, the gel coat's nice because you can polish it, it's durable, and you can repair it really easily if you need to. It's also easy to work with. So the direct materials that I'll be using for this job are, of course, the chop strand mat. It's got randomly oriented strands of fiberglass held together with a binder that will eventually dissolve in the polyester resin when it's time to wet it out. Uh, this particular mat is 1.5 ounces per square yard, which is a pretty common mat. Uh, you can also get it in 3 quarter ounce per square yard, and some people like to use that for the skin coats, uh, which is the first uh, layer of fiberglass against the gel coat, just because it's a little bit easier to work into the nooks and crannies, and it's a little bit thinner. Um, but I've never done that, and I think this works just fine for a skin coat, so that's what I'll be using. Uh, the resin I'll be using is this general purpose polyester resin. Uh, this is uh, orthothallic resin, which will work fine for a project like this. I'm not going to be uh, using this mold to pull hundreds and hundreds of parts, so it should be fine. Isothallic would be a little bit better, it has less shrinkage, uh, a little bit more heat resistance for service temperatures. Um, but this is a little bit more inexpensive and it should work just fine. The gel coat, however, that I'll be using is an isothallic resin, so it's a high quality tooling orange isothallic gel coat. Uh, it's got a little bit less shrinkage during cure, it can handle a little bit higher temperature after it's cured, um, and it's a little bit of a harder surface, so it will handle um, a little bit more abuse without uh, cracking or chipping or whatever. Um, and you can also get it to a nice high sheen uh, if you want that on your mold surface. Uh, to cure both of these, the tool coat and the resin, you'll need a initiator. Uh, a lot of people call it a catalyst. This is called MEKP hardener. It must be called a hardener. Um, depending on the resin and the gel coat that you use, they'll specify a specific hardener. Uh, it's probably either MEK or MEKP, most likely. Uh, there's some other ones out there, but that's the most common one. Um, this is very cheap. It's only a dollar or two, probably. And um, you can get it wherever you get your resin, most likely. Uh, this isn't really a direct material, but because it uh, is consumed and used up and transfers to the mold, um, I wanted to include it in this section. It's a wax release agent. The particular brand that I'm using is Pardol Paste Number no. 2. Uh, I've used this in the past. It works really good. It's easy to use, and if you get a can like this, it's only $10 to $11 probably. It'll last a long time, so that's what I would recommend. Alright, I'm going to get into the tools you'll need to start this job.